So welcome, 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 everybody. And thank you, everybody, for your patience. We were having a couple of um, Facebook Live issues. So for those of us who are not joining there, we can access that via Zoom. And this is actually going to be available on demand after the recording. So happy Veterans Day, everybody, to, um, to those who served. I myself am a veteran. I was in the Army. And I figured, what better way to talk about a few good men than to actually have a, um, have a, uh, have a free masterclass about where we can actually find incredible men when we when we are divorced or when we are single over the age of 40 and we're looking and we actually quite frankly feel like really frustrated that there's no good men around so for our agenda today in our mini masterclass, we're going to actually be looking at a couple of great things. So the first thing we're actually going to look at is the truth about dating now and then. Why you hear stories from your grandparents or your parents. Why, oh, well, I met so-and-so and dating was easy. Why can't you find a good person at the age of 45 or 46 or 57? It's something that I hear with my girlfriends. It's certainly something that I hear with my clients who are 45 and better. So we're actually going to talk about kind of destructing those myths and kind of rumors and see why actually right now in 2022 at midlife, it's actually a lot better to find and attract wonderful single men. Afterwards, y'all are going to be getting a little bit of tough love from, from Coach Martha. I am a dating coach. I am here to empower you and to make you realize that the love of your life is out there. But unfortunately, I am not a fairy godmother who can just bring a George Clooney lookalike or an Idris Elba lookalike just like knocking on your door and with a with a ring in hand or with a with um emotional availability at hand. I can do many things for you, but I can't I can't just wish a great man into existence for you. So we're going to be getting some really good tough love on that that you can actually use to help you. And then kind of the uh, the section that we're all waiting for is where your future partner or where your future love will actually find you, as well as where you can find them. And I'm really excited to share this because none of these have to do with online dating. So if you want to make connections, and you want to get confident talking to men at midlife and beyond, but you're sick and tired of seeing the guys with holding up the fish or wearing the MAGA hats or, you know, doing the selfies where they're bare chested and it's always in a bathroom and it's kind of always has dirty windows and whatever. We don't have to do that. So that's the good news. And then we're actually going to have like a really fun exercise that we'll, we'll do. And I would definitely invite you to, to look at that a little bit afterwards, after the free training of, I like to call it the ABCs of, of meeting guys. It's super fun. It's super active. And it's going to help you actually get out there and really start making connections with some incredible men. So without further ado, Let's talk a little bit about the um, the truth about dating when you are over 40 and in the year 2022. So I completely understand that dating at midlife and beyond can, can feel like a complete hellscape. So when I went through my divorce about 10 years ago and I was at midlife, I was not really using the apps, but it still was very kind of frustrating. And every once in a while, when I did go on the apps, it was it was terrible. So I think in the past, Past 10 years or so since Tinder and um, and Bumble and Hinge and Plenty of Fish and things like that have been online, the technology and kind of the interaction between finding love and, 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 and meeting good men can seem very, very frustrating. And um, if it seems frustrating, it's because it is. And so let's actually put a couple of things into context here, why dating and finding good quality folks can actually seem really hard if you're just relying solely online. And the reason why why, and it's kind of a little known secret, is if you think about the people who actually created online dating, who were they? They were the socially awkward, nerdy guys in high school who, had they not had the talent and founded these great big tech companies, let's face it, ladies, they would probably still be living in their parents' basement. So what they were doing was when they were setting up that technology, it was solely within the male gaze and actually not having to actually go out and socialize and be charming and be open and be approachable. 
So when online dating is very diminutive and it just makes you feel like an object that, okay, no guy's going to swipe on me unless I have a pretty face. I have put a beautiful dating profile and everybody's just swipe, swipe, swipe. But even when we match, they just are like, oh, you're hot. Show me your tits. If you feel frustrated and that has been your experience, understand that unfortunately that is normal because we are looking at the type of people who actually created in the first place. We're the people who were a little bit antisocial and had not learned those interpersonal communication skills. So the good news for that is if you do not like online dating and you do not like how men approach you on that, there are much better ways to meet men. And the even better news about that is that in 2022, our lifestyles and just how we lead and how we think and how we just live in different areas are completely different than how our parents and grandparents met. So when we take a look at how the people in the generations before us met, it was usually the boy next door. It was usually the nice boy at the synagogue, the nice boy at church, the nice guy you met at the school dance. Um, my grandparents actually met there. They met like at a church dance and within three months they were engaged, which just absolutely blows my mind. And so understanding that back in the day, it might've seemed easier, but that's because the social connections were a lot smaller but social connections ran a lot deeper. And so that is almost the exact opposite of how we are today, that our social networks really are not as deep as our parents or grandparents or great grandparents, because there's not really a lot of barn raising going on. There's not a lot of frontier communities. There's not a lot of church dances that you're really going to, you know, when you're 45 years old. And so just understanding that you are probably going to date slightly differently and you're going to be dating outside of kind of this realm and this point of view that maybe your parents or your grandparents have. And so I think the good news, and I choose to see that as a dating coach, I choose to take a look at this as from an empowering standpoint is, okay, we don't have those what, those really deep social networks like our parents did in prior generations, but guess what we have that they don't? We have more resources, especially as women over 40. We have more resources in that we have more independence. I can't believe, you know, 30 years ago, I don't even think that you could have your own checking account as a woman, but we have more financial independence now. We have more flexibility. We have more freedom, especially after COVID. We have the ability to work from home if we want. We actually have the ability to get up and move wherever the hell we want. We can move from state to state. We can move from city to city. You know, if we have the visas in place, we can actually move from country to country. So now more than ever, as a woman over 40, you have so many more opportunities available to you to meet incredible people whether that's friendships and then whether that is meeting cute guys and whether that is having relationships with guys, you have more opportunities to do that than your mothers ever did or your grandmothers ever did. And so I honestly find that very, very motivating and very, and very liberating. But then it is kind of the question of how do you want to use that information and how do you want to use that power? And I think that actually goes into kind of responsibility. So let me give you even more good news. And then we'll go into a little bit of how do we take responsibility for that? And how do we take action to actually make our love lives absolutely incredible? So even more good news is that, believe it or not, there are 53 million single men over the age of 40 in the United States. And so I believe I got that statistic from the US Census Bureau. So that is wonderful. So when we say, well, all the good men are married, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily the case because you have men who have been through divorces. You have men that are, maybe they're divorced, but they have a good relationship with their ex-wives. You have men who are in their 50s who have started to go to therapy, whose kids are in college. You have men in their 60s who are grandfathers now who are maybe widowers and they're good men, but they just really haven't had the opportunity to get out and date. And understand as well that those 53 single men over the age, 53 million, I'm sorry, 53 million single men over the age of 40 in the United States do want love and they want to date, but understand they're going to feel shy too. They might feel intimidated as well. They might feel awkward because much like everybody, you know, the women that I coach, if y'all haven't like dated in a long time, they're like, well, how do I do that? So let me offer this that anytime you feel awkward or weird trying to date again, there are 53 million single men over the age of 40 who are also feeling awkward.
and they want to talk and they want to connect as well and they're stick on using the phones as well they don't want to do online dating anymore either because they're not having much success and so i actually think that's actually a very kind of powerful very uplifting fact if you choose to see it like that in addition to that good news is that ladies right now we have a shit ton of options to meet these incredible men if you don't want to do it by the phone because i think with online dating you can put it a part of your dating portfolio but it doesn't it doesn't have to be your entire your the entire source of your dating treat it just like it's two percent of it five percent of it and you have all these other options and you're like well martha what are those options stick around kid because we are going to go through all of those so those two really great pieces of news that there are 53 million single men who are thriving in 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 the united states who also want to find love just like you so that's great news also we have a shit ton of options to meet those incredible men and it includes it does not include having to swipe white right swipe left all of that while your eyes glaze over while you're doing it while you're sitting on the toilet we don't have to do that however let's then take a look at if you want to take advantage of those opportunities offline to meet them, and if you want to think about and maybe meet even just a handful of those 53 million single men in the US, it is going to be your responsibility, my dears, to put that into action. I know it's like, oh God, I'm, you know, Martha, I'm I'm working crazy hours. I might have kids I'm taking care of, or I might have adult children I'm taking care of. I might have alien parents. I, I might have a dog who's got arthritis. That's me. Um, how am I? I'm I'm already so responsible for so much. Now you're telling me that I actually have to take this burden on. So that is actually going to go to you all some um some tough love from Coach Martha. So while I'm here to help you and empower you, like I'd said before, I cannot be a fairy godmother who just magically bibbity bobbity boop and Prince Charming who's emotionally available, who looks like Daniel Day-Lewis, who also has kids who he has great relationships with, but they're already in college. I cannot like summon that out of thin air for you. And so when we are talking about responsibility and taking radical personal responsibility to take a hold of your love life and take charge of your love life, I've got some facts for you guys. So the first fact is, if you don't want to go online, and that's fine, if you don't want to use a matchmaker, and I have clients who've had matchmakers that they have not had good success with, but if you don't want to use a matchmaker, if you don't want to use like a premium matchmaker who is charging $100,000 a year to work with you, or you don't hire me as a dating coach who also works with you to help you source those good men, you will need to do that matchmaking on your own. So you do have some options. You have a professional matchmaker. You know, you could, you know, try your luck online. I don't know about that. You could work with me as a dating coach who helps you square that away. But if you're like, no, I don't want to do those things, you will need to do the matchmaking on your own. So we're going to get into what that means in a little bit. And so another fact some more tough love from Coach Martha, is that you need to be proactive to make the effort to find and connect with incredible men. So what does that mean? That means that if you are sitting at home at on Friday night and Saturday night, and you were watching a Lux listing, or you're watching, you know, whatever Netflix show, and you were just wishing and hoping for a good man to come on by, um, unless it's like some creepy stalker or whatever, no man is just going to like fall through your window or fall through your ceiling and being like, hi, it's not going to be like some sexy new neighbor who's like Brazilian with a great accent is going to like knock on your door and be like, hello, I am your neighbor. Do you have any butter? Like, I just, I wish that would happen for you, but it's probably not going to. So you have to be proactive and you have to make the effort and you have to get out of your comfort zone. So what I have a lot of clients telling me and what I have a lot of my readers telling me and shit, even my friends who are single, they say, well, Martha, I just don't think there's any good men there. And so what I, you know, cause I'm, I'm a coach, I'm a dating coach. This is what I love doing. What I will ask them and what I'll ask the, uh, the viewers of this free training, I will ask you is, okay, if something is not working, what are you, what are you doing differently? And I usually get met with like crickets and we as humans are all going to do that, that we are just kind of on a single track mind and we are living our lives and we are just staying in our comfort zones. 
And so we automatically think, oh, it's not working because it's not working within my comfort zone. So if you want things and you want results to be different, you need to get out of your comfort zone and do things differently. Bottom line. That's not just in dating and finding love, but that's kind of like if you're disappointed in your job, no one's going to like magically give you a raise. You might have to campaign for it. What do you do? You Maybe you go and you find another job. You, you do those things. If you want to lose weight and you're just sitting there and you're not walking and you know you're not eating well and you're drinking one too many bottles of wine, hey, that's me, and you're mad or you're upset that you're not losing weight, it's kind of like, okay, well, what do you need to do differently? And even if you know you have to do it differently, you have to be willing and proactive to get out of your comfort zone to get those results. Dating and finding love at midlife is no different. And I would actually say getting out of your comfort zone is is even more important in, in dating at midlife. Okay, so I don't want to belabor this point a little, you know, too much, but it really stands to reason, like I'd said, um, tough love from Martha, from Coach Martha again. You have to take responsibility for your own love life. Full stop. If it is important to you, and if it's a priority to you, tough love, no more bitching and complaining about it. I'm saying that to all you lovely ladies there, because I know that you guys are all professionally successful. You're badasses. You're incredible mothers. You're incredible sisters. You're incredible friends. But I want you to just get very honest with yourself here. If finding love for you and meeting great men and attracting love and you really want to be in a healthy relationship with a partner, with a companion, if you want to get married, yeah, whatever, you know, but if you want all those things, it has to be a priority in your life. Because I've worked with people before that they've been single for three years And they say, well, I just can't find a good man. I can't find a good man. But they are not doing anything to find a good man. All they'll do is like they go to work, then they go home and they'll swipe right or left and then they'll get mad that they can't find anything. So you got to be proactive. Like, for example, if you're trying to lose weight, you know that you're going to have to put eating as a priority, eating right. You know that you're going to have to work out and do that as a priority. You know that you're going to have to work on your food triggers and you're really going to have to be proactive and prioritize that. Because if it's at the bottom of the priority list, nothing's going to happen for you. Finding love and taking responsibility for your own love life is the same thing. So if this is important to you, you will need to plan for it. Whether that is working in my Ready for Love group container, that's a way to prioritize it. Whether it is doing some energy release work to figure out, hey, are there some energy blocks that are holding me back? If it is rewriting scripts that you're operating on that says maybe you're not worthy of love. If it is, you know that, okay, every Tuesday, I am going to do that. I am going to save that for going and connecting with men. If it is, hey, I know every Friday there is a meetup, a singles meetup, and although it's mad corny, I am going to make the commitment to go and at least talk. Doesn't matter if people are attractive, I am at least going to get used to talking and connecting with people in real life. You have to take responsibility for that. I can't do that for you. I wish I could, but it rests on you. I can be your guide. Hell yeah, I want to be teacher. I want to be your coach. But this responsibility will rest on you. Another fact as well is that, so you can say, okay, Martha, well, um, fine. I I believe you. So you know what? I'm just going to get a bunch of girlfriends in me and we're all going to go do a wine tasting and we're going to meet guys there. Okay, maybe they'll talk to you. But something to, to think about as well is that I want you to understand, and I know this because I have worked with men before. Um, I have, I was originally a coach for men over 50, and I have plenty of guy friends who are over 40 who want to actually be a guest speaker and want to join kind of the Ready for Love cohort. But what I have heard from every single man over the age of 40 in my life that if they are at a function, whether it's a conference or whether it's like a, uh, you know, an event like at a community college or if it's at a steakhouse or rather if it's like a huge employee kind of Christmas party where you see people who work in another division and so you don't know them, any man, unless he's like Superman or unless he's like, I don't know, kind of like Christian Bale on, in, in, um, in American Psycho, even the best man is going to be intimidated and is going to feel shy approaching you. If you're with a whole group of girlfriends, bottom line, 
those who travel in packs do not success, do not, do not attract. So if you're with your whole bunch of group of girlfriends and you're like, well, why aren't, why isn't any guy approaching me? Know that it's because they're going to feel intimidated, like full stop. So, but let me offer kind of a nuanced view on that as well. Is that if you are starting to get back into meeting and socializing, and if you are maybe working through some trauma, so if you are a survivor of sexual harassment, if you are a survivor of sexual assault, I completely understand that this might be kind of triggering for you and this might be kind of nerve wracking for you. So let me offer you two things that continue to work, you know, working through those traumas with your therapist, continue to kind of do that inner work. But if you still feel a little bit shy, what I can advise and what I can offer is you can bring a ring when you are starting to do this and you're just kind of getting your feet wet, you can bring a winged woman but no more than one. If you want to go and practice talking to men like at the steakhouse or at a bourbon, at like a bourbon tasting or, you know, any, anywhere else, you can bring one girlfriend, but that is the maximum. Cause here's the thing. If you want to go and have fun, fun with your girlfriends and have a good time. Awesome. If you guys want to like maybe smile and whatever and think, okay, maybe a group of guys will come talk to us. That's fine. But understand that if it's just you and you want to prioritize finding love and you want to do that and you need to build that confident skill set to be able to approach a guy and say like, oh, hey, how you doing or whatever. Or you want to practice kind of the smile, you know, the looking across the room, you make eye contact, you smile, you look down, you smile, he's still looking at you, you know, and you want to do this or whatever. And you get like, you can do that and practice that. But if you if you don't want to do it alone yet, bring a girlfriend but understand that you do need to start getting more comfortable, like being out and about by yourself. So let's take a look then at the moment we've all been waiting for, right? That you're like, okay, Martha, I get it. You have talked to me about the tough love. Yeah, I get it. I need to be responsible for my own love life. I know that I need to get comfortable kind of flying solo in different places so I can be more approachable or if I'm you know, just approaching a cute guy by myself, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that it's going to be different than how my grandparents and my parents dated. Okay, but okay, I didn't come for that, Martha. Damn it. I came for this part. Okay, so your patience is definitely going to be rewarded right here. So let me take a sip of water and then we're going to get into kind of the uh, the meat and the guts of, of this training, which is drum roll, please. Where are all the good single men? So I have done a lot of kind of research and data collection with this as a divorce coach and as a mentor. And I, as somebody who has had dated at midlife for about 10 years, um, before I met my, I met my husband, um, I, I got, um, my, I, um, I recently remarried, um, back in, back in May. And so I was in, you know, I was a single girl for, for 10 years as well after my initial divorce. And so, out of doing the work myself and going out and be sociable, being sociable solo, because I'm like, you know what, going with my girlfriends is actually going to be kind of a distraction. Cause you always had like that girlfriend who's kind of like the Debbie Downer. Um, but all of this information has been from research, has been from interviews with my clients who have successfully met men. It has been interviews with my audience. So my fantastic Instagram followers, as well as the wonderful women who read my blog and my newsletter, as well as girlfriends. And so this has actually been, I would say about 10 years of data collection to present to you. These have been some of the best places that I have personally experienced, as well as my clients have experienced and my girlfriends have experienced to meet great single men in the wild that don't include any, any kind of online dating. So I know people say, well, okay, but yeah, what if I'm, I'm, what if I'm talking to a man at a baseball game and what if he's married? Okay. Yeah, fine. You guys, as a dating coach, I cannot guarantee you that every single man that you talk to is not is uh, every single one of them is going to be single. No, about 50% of them are married, you know, more or less about 50% of them are, are, are single. That's, that's kind of the statistics, right? So what I can guarantee you though, is the more that you practice being in male dominated spaces, and I'm not saying that to be like toxic masculine or anything that, but when I say male dominated, it's when the ratio of men far outnumber the ratio of women. So when you get comfortable in those spaces and making connections and talking with men there, yeah, some of them might be married, but guess what? There's a shitload of them who are not married. 
And so these are great places to start getting confident and comfortable speaking with men and actually the most important thing, building your confidence and building this muscle for you to get confident, to be approachable, to radiate that magnetic energy that I know you have and to start those conversations. Now, another caveat here is that I, as your dating coach, am not saying, you know, hey, Nicole, hey, so-and-so, as long as you go to Morden Steakhouse on a Thursday night at 5.30 p.m., I guarantee you when you do that, that first conversation you have with a nice man there, he's going to be your husband. I'm not saying that because you guys, you know that that is not, that is not how the world works. But understand, bottom line, the more that you get comfortable interfacing in these spaces, the much higher chance you're going to have of putting yourself out there and feeling confident and having kind of like that ma magnetic energy that is going to make you feel great speaking to men. And that is actually going to attract them to you. So here's a list. I think there's about 28 here. And so let's, we can go through these really quick sporting events. It doesn't matter what city you're in, um, whether it's baseball, football, basketball, pickleball, foosball, who, what, it doesn't matter. Even if you're in a small town, there's always going to be a sporting event, whether it's supporting the high school football team or youth soccer, guess what? There's plenty of divorced ads at youth soccer. Um, any of those things, whether it is even going to a Washington nationals game, I live in Washington, DC, and I would go when I was single, I would love going there with one of my girlfriends and just we'd be surrounded by great guys to talk to. Also sports bars. So, you know, sports aren't just for guys. Like I love a good UFC fight. Like no, low key, I will go watch that. And that is actually really fun to go to a sports bar. There's a sports bar. I don't care the size of your town or city. There's always going to be a sports bar there or a bar at least that maybe is not calling itself a sports bar, but it's going to show the game. Go there, have a burger. If you're actually don't really know, but you want to understand, yeah, ask a good guy. Hey, what's going on here? Or hey, you know, who are you betting money on? It's too easy. Steakhouses. You're going to find steakhouses in even smaller areas. I'm from a very rural area in Wyoming. That's my hometown. There's steakhouses there. So what I don't want any of you ladies to do is to say, well, Martha, I live in I live in Fremont, California. There's only there's only 100,000 people here. Or but I live in Abilene, Texas, Martha. We only we don't have a lot of people. Or I live in Matitsi, Wyoming. Real place, look it up. I live in Matitsi, Wyoming. There's only 50 people here. You guys, it's bullshit. As long as there are people in your town, there are going to be places where people congregate because we are social creatures. And so you can always find great places to get out and socialize. Driving range, if you like to, you know, like a top golf kind of situation, or if you want to, you know, if you if you want to try your hand at golf, men love golf, that's a great place to go with a girlfriend and go by yourself, you know, that's a great place to connect, there's always going to be guys who want to teach you how to golf. Tennis clubs, if you like playing tennis, there's, um, I live near a rec center in Washington, DC, and it's one of these that has I shit you guys not it has like eight tennis courts. And I'm, when I'm walking my little arthritic dog, I am always seeing groups of guys who go up to like groups of girls and be like, do you want to play us? So there's always places to, you know, to, 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 um, to meet up. Also salsa clubs, who doesn't like to dance? There's, you're always going to find like a salsa club in a midsize or large city. If you're even in a town that has a community college, there's always going to be professor talks, free book talks, guest lectures that you can go to that interest you and strive to get conversations with great people. Adult education classes, community college classes. If you want to learn personal finance 101 or how to set up your own business, there's going to be classes with just incredible people. And I have been to a lot of those, like um, cooking classes and business classes. And there was always like wonderful single men there, really great guys. Auto and boat shows. There's a Washington auto show in DC, but there's always boat shows, auto shows all across America. If you want to like look at like a hot new Tesla, hell yeah, go to those. Strike up a conversation with a good guy there and who knows what can happen. Remember at this stage right now, we're just learning how to meet and practice getting confident, talking to great men. I'm a little bit biased because I love industry events and work conferences because I actually met my husband at a software conference. 
And so any kind of industry, whether you're, it, it doesn't matter, even if you're in kind of nonprofit space, if you're at a conference, or if you are, I know, kind of like in a military or some kind of industrial situation, there's always going to be industry events. Just check with your local chamber of commerce, or even if there's a convention center in your town to get those calendars and reach out to them if that is something that that interests you, or that you know, oh, there could actually be a lot of interesting men there. Men love cigar bars. If you can stand the smoke, check out the cigar bars. And if you're like, but Martha, there's only old nasty men there. Well, guess what? Old nasty men have sons who are in their 40s. So that's what we got to think of as well. That the men, oh, he's a nice married guy. I met him. But guess what? That nice married guy might actually have some good single friends. So that's what we have to start looking at. Car dealerships. Always great guys to talk to at, at car dealerships, whether you're a Jeep girl or whether you're a Mercedes girl or you're like, you know what, Martha, I just love my Toyota RAV4. There's always going to be great people to talk about, to talk to. One of the also places like really great to meet and talk to men, bourbon tastings, craft brew tastings, wine as well. But I have found that with rye, bourbon, whiskey, some of those kind of like, oh, I'm a man, I drink bourbon. Um, those types of tastings or openings or anything like that are going to be great places to, to meet to meet and connect with men. Now, political support groups. It doesn't matter your political affiliation, if there is some kind of political cause you care about, or if there's, and I say this, you know, just because, you know, we just had election day, if there's a political cause you care about, if there's a particular local candidate that you care about that you want to campaign for, if you go there, there's always going to be men who are super motivated to get out the vote as well. And those are great people to have common to to meet like commonality with and you already have a really great thing to talk about. And that's the thing with all of these is you already are going to have a conversation starter. So you don't have to feel awkward. Like if you're seeing a really cute guy at a bourbon place or like at a whiskey tasting and you know he seems kind of clueless because that's the thing too if you're like well Martha well, no man's approaching me. Well, there's a couple of reasons why. It could be that he's clueless um, and it could be that he's intimidated. So in this stage of dating, you definitely have full license. And I would encourage you to just, because it's so low stakes at this point, to go and approach him like, well, hey, so do you actually prefer things from a Scottish distillery or an Irish distillery? You know, if it's a political support group, well, hey, do you actually, what are, what are your thoughts? Do you actually think that this proposition is actually going to help X, Y, Z? Same thing with the charity or volunteer event. Now, if you're like, well, Martha, I don't want to go dig up trees for the Sierra Club. That's not my style. I'm a little bit, that's not my, you know, it's not my vibe. I'm not like a crunchy granola girl. That's fine. I'm not telling you to go like plant trees with Sierra Club. But guess what other kind of volunteer and charity events there are? There are galas. Who doesn't want to go to like a gala? And that's any kind of mid-sized city is going to have a performing arts center or a theater or even a local theater, like a community theater that you can go and support and they'll always have like little events and co and like cocktail parties and you can go to that fitness events whether it's volunteering at a marathon or training at a marathon or doing like one of those tough mutter things that are really popular i don't know why those are popular i was in the army i did all that shit in basic training and i would never do that for fun but there are fit people motivated people that you could connect to there as well as well as outdoor activities now, if you're in a mid-sized city or a larger city that has an REI or has, you know, an LL Bean or has a Bass Pro Shop or anything like that, they actually host a lot of low cost or free activities. So again, if you do want to learn a little bit more about Survival 101, or if you're just like, can somebody just please help me try to figure out how to like put up a tent? No shame. Go to those. It's You're going to A, learn a really great skill and B, there's always going to be kind of like cool like crunchy granola guys but if you're like but Martha yeah there was a nice young man but he's 25 and that's not my vibe guess what that 25 year old young man has a divorced dad who's very nice who is probably too shy to meet nice ladies so we look at those kind of loose connections as well dog parks you guys dog parks are such a great place to meet men so many men there have been when I was single I was able to get so many numbers from great men who were at local dog parks and even the smallest towns have dog parks so it might help if you have a dog but you know what even if not you know just go in and be like hey you know what I'm actually really interested in getting a dog or I love dogs I love being around them I just can't have a dog right now with my crazy schedule but guess what there's always going to be great guys and they always have like the mastiffs or they always have like the bulldogs or whatever who you can approach and talk to too easy
ski resorts. There's always going to be like hunky dudes who want to teach you how to ski or whatnot. Or if you're like, you know what, Martha, I don't want to break my leg. I don't want to be out in the cold. Ski resorts are still a lot of fun because ski resorts have ski lounges. And that goes back to some of the original things that we talked about, like bars, steakhouses. When we have, when we talk about bars, it doesn't have to be like some noisy, nasty dollar night beer, beer pong, whatever, from when we were in college. No, there's like really great, classy, sexy bars and lounges that we can go and have a drink. And even if it's just talking to the bartender and saying, hey, what's the vibe here? Hey, what kind of people come here? And making friends with a bartender, especially if you are looking to meet people, that bartender is going to have your back. Because that bartender knows everybody. That bartender is going to be like, oh, well, you know what? Jacob has been divorced for about five years. Joe is a hot mess. You know, there's whoever, whoever, whoever. So don't discount bars or ski resorts. So I'm a personal fan as well as hobby conventions and fan conventions. So let's talk about Comic-Con or any of those kind of like Comic-Con, whatever's in your area, or if there's even kind of local enthusiast comic book conferences or baseball card collecting conferences, or even there's a really great conference in DC that they'll have. It's a, it's a convention and it's like uh, travel. And all these travel representatives are there. And I've actually met some like hunky dudes there. And so you had that guise of, hey, I would really like to take this guided tour of Pakistan. What can you tell me about the place? And yeah, maybe, you know, you don't end up like getting the guy's number, but at least you're using that practice muscle to get confident. And to build that, to be like, yeah, I can talk to these guys. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now I feel confident talking to them. Ooh, let me try to flirt with them and let's let's try that. But there's no way in hell you're going to be able to get confident and feel great about approaching men and just having that really good energy unless you do it. Just full stop. That's just that's just how it is. It is kind of like there's no way as a woman, you're just going to magically know how to do push-ups unless you start doing them. So with a push-up, you start on your knees until you get strong enough. Then maybe you just do a plank and you hold that until you're strong enough. Then you do a half push-up or a tricep dip until you're strong enough. Then you do one push-up. Then you do two push-ups. And then you do, I don't know, 50 a day like I do because I'm a weirdo and I was in the army. And that's just kind of who I am now. But the point is you have to get that practice. And just being in these environments where it can be fun, you can learn stuff, there's really good energy, you don't have to be like feeling threatened, you can have all that and approach and talk to great men. Festivals too. Every community from the tiniest town to like the biggest metropolis is going to have some type of festival. Whether it's like a cute ribbon cutting situation or whether it's like a cute like Main Street parade or if there's a music festival or one of my clients actually met and dated for a minute a really great guy at a Brazilian festival in, in California. Food festivals, wine festivals, music festivals, insert whatever kind of thing there is in your town. And that is a great opportunity to get out and meet people and practice your skills talking to men. Now, I know the next one is a little bit controversial but I am here to introduce you all the options. I am not here to say what's better or worse. It is just what works for you. But the amount of men compared to the amount of women at gun ranges and gun shows is just off the charts. Plus, if you're like, you know what, I don't, I'm actually not really interested in guns. If you ever want to go to a place and just feel great because there's never a line for the women's room, go to a gun show. Like I promise. But if you're like, no, you know what? Um, I, I'm 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 a little bit interested. I just, you know, if I if I if I fear our arms or whatever, maybe I can just go and and learn a little about it or this or that. Um, and that's kind of a good way to to meet men as well if you are aligned with that. If that is something that you oppose or whatnot, why don't you actually go to just you know a charity event instead or the salsa club? So, but for women, you know, because I I don't discriminate here. Um, but that is, I just want you guys to know that is a great place to to meet and talk with men. Bowling alleys. Who doesn't love the bowl? Bowling alleys, amusement arcades, like top golf, axe throwing, any of those kind of VR places. Those are great places to to meet men as well. And what I have seen in my research is that there's a much higher number of men. There's like men's bowling leagues, and that's cute. I've seen like guys who are like engineers in their 50s who meet up. I've seen like some army buddies, you know, army retirees and whatnot go and 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 meet up there. So bowling hours are like really great places to go and and and, and talk to guys. 
why not? And guess what? A lot of those have like a bar or a cafe that you can, you know, that you can, you know, approach and, and have a conversation. Water sports. If you are interested in learning how to ski, uh, water ski or do windsurfing or do surfing, there are great opportunities to meet and mingle and speak with guys as well. And I remember this when I was in Aruba, I was doing kind of a, um, I think it's like parasailing and there was a, a couple of retired Dutch guys there who owned who owned the place and I actually really love seeing I saw there's these two women you could tell they were divorced and they were just flirting up a storm with these Dutch instructors and I'm like good for you guys so definitely water sports is a great place to go and speak with men and if you're like well Martha how can I be sure that any of these places you've mentioned even have single men what if there's just a bunch of uh, uh, married guys there or guys who are in relationships? Well, you know, what, what am I going to do there? Okay, so the shortest way to start speaking with single guys is going to some of these singles vacations. So there's like, I, I see this all the time that there's, oh, singles travel for London or singles travel to go to Mexico together. So that's a great place to meet with singles. In addition to singles events. If there's speed dating or what I actually love are a lot of these meetup groups that are like better, better events for people over 40 or single professionals in the city. And you will see on meetup, if you put singles or dating, there will always be categories for people who are 40 and over. Because yeah, if you don't want to date younger, don't bother going to the ones that are called like young professionals in the city. And, you know, unless you do want to be a cougar, I'm a bit of a cougar or a puma or whatever. So, but understand that there will be specifically for single people. And you can find that on Meetup, you can find that on Eventbrite, or you can Google singles vacations. Also Vegas, there's no better place for folks who are single to go. They might go with a group of friends or they might go with a, a, a girlfriend or a guy or a buddy and go and practice talking there and, and have fun kind of using your dating skills there. One of the places I also love uh, is anything from national parks. So I live in DC, as I said, and there's a lot of about an hour away, there's a lot of civil war sites. And those are run by the National Park Service. And there are always guys, I guarantee you, there are always men over the age of 50 there who, who, who love going to the ranger talks and who love going to those museums or they're there and they're like a single dad and they're taking their, their teenage son. And that is a place as well where there are a lot of great guys to talk to. And if you're like, well, hey, what do you think of the Battle of Bull Run? Yeah, that's that's an okay opening line. Why not? Like you're that's it's fine. As well as think tanks. So if you say, well, Martha, you know, I live, you know, there's no think tank in Grand Junction, Colorado, or I, I don't know, wherever, wherever you are. Um, I'm calling bullshit on that. Cause I guarantee you, if you type in organizations or think tanks in and pop up your city, there are going to be think tanks that that come up. So if any of those interest you, you want to go to that website and you're going to want to find the part that says events and then drop down and you can take a look and see what events are open to the public. And those are great places to meet men and talk with men there. Um, there's a couple of really good ones in DC because it is a little bit more military minded that I remember when I was single, I had a girlfriend and I go, and there's always this one particular kind of um, um, kind of like strategic studies, kind of international relations think tank that every Friday would host a guest speaker, and they would have like this really good kind of mix and mingle afterwards. And there would always be guys over the age of 40 who were in the military or were military adjacent, and you could tell they were there looking for lovely ladies to talk to. So those are all really great options and so we're actually going to have these in the slides if you want to we're going to have this in the training um so if you want to actually go ahead and um and take a look at that and save this for later or right now if you'd like um i would invite anybody who's actually watching this to actually take a picture of this if that's helpful for you as well and i'll just give you guys a minute or so to do that Okay, and so something else that can be helpful after, in addition to that slide, is what I like to call as the ABCs of connecting. So if you feel like, well, Martha, that's great, but what if, what if I have other ideas? What if my ideas were popping in my head now that we that we're getting these juices flowing? Um, and uh, I've got a couple of ideas, so that's awesome. So this is a great exercise called the ABCs of dating. 
that what you can do, and I'll just give you the instructions. Um, we won't take the time to like write it now because we are, you know, we are coming up on the hour. But what I would invite you to do, whether it is with your computer or whether it's on the, your notepad, write down the letters just vertically, A through Z. And when you do that, for every letter, I would invite you to just write down, okay, where where is a place per letter that I could I could meet someone, or I could I could meet some great single men that they could be there and I could practice my conversation skills. And when you do this exercise, don't overthink it. Don't edit yourself. Just go to kind of get those fun juices flowing. So if you're like, well, what is a he what the hell is Martha talking about? Let me just give you an example. And honestly, I did these in real time for myself. I was not thinking about these, which is why some of these are just very, very silly. Um, but just as an example, when I started doing it, atheist convention, um, or, you know, I'm just thinking, okay, Alzheimer's support group. I don't know if that's like a great place to like, you know, be in a romantic mood. Um, bourbon tasting. Why not? Um, Black Panther screening. You know, that's what I'm thinking for like, be off the top of my head. Classic movie festival. Um, let me see, or even put, like class, or you could put like a community college class. Delta Airlines lounge. Like that's, that's what I thought of with like with D or dog park or dog lovers or anything like that. Um, the one that I, came up for me was um, England enthusiasts meet up, or if you're just like ecumenical society or the Episcopal church, whatever you can think of, you know, for F um, like French fr francophile, French, French enthusiasts, like a French class, uh, G, um, golf, miniature golf. Um, these are in real time. So this is really embarrassing that I'm doing this for you guys right now. Um, H, uh, hotel lobby. Why not? Go meet, like, go talk to a sexy guy, like, in the Ritz Carlton hotel lobby. Why not? Um, what comes after H, I, um, Iceland. There's lots of great hunky looking, you know, Viking guys in Iceland. Um, when I was going through this exercise with one of my clients, she wrote an igloo party. I'm like, where do we find one of those? And she's like, I don't know. Um, but she's in a very cold part of the United States. So she's, she can probably find that. Um, let me see what do, what do we let's go actually go through these together real time um where are we jay um let me see uh jamaican festival um k let me see what begins with k um i can't think that so i'm just gonna i'm gonna skip that um it's a jk l um l uh B like the Louboutin store you might not find straight guys there though um m um like a mixer like a meetup or like a, a mixer on meetup um, and uh, like a, a, a class with um, uh, like with a with with ninjas. I don't know. So at any rate, though, the exercise here is just to find as many as you can that come up off the top of your head. And then after that, go back and fill in the spaces. And so I would encourage you after our master class here to take, you know, five or 10 minutes to do that. It's, it's, it's really fun. And, um, and just don't, don't overthink that. Have, have a lot of fun. You, you might not, the things that you have that are kind of silly, that's fine, but then you can go back and edit it. You're like, you know what, when I put, you know, uh, oh, um, you know, at the, uh, I can't even think of anything right now that you guys, but like at the octagon, because I'm an MMA fighter, you can go back and change that once you think of something else. So, what I would definitely kind of invite you guys to do after this masterclass is a little bit of take home homework is finish that A to Z exercise, which is really, really fun. Um, and I would love to, to see what you have. So if you are watching this in the, in the Facebook group, definitely upload, you know, share that, share the picture or just share it in the post. And for the ladies who are joining us because they found the link via Instagram, or they found the link because you're one of my newsletter subscribers, shoot me an email shoot me an email at martha at marthabodyfelt.com or send me a dm on my instagram send it it's just at martha body felt m-a-r-t-h-a-b-o-d-y-f-e-l-t because i would love to see your suggestions and if you'd like i'm happy to kind of share those and i'm happy to give you a little bit more suggestions too and so also from that screenshot that you took of the list of 28 places to meet men, what I would invite you to do to kind of take that radical action, that radical responsibility that we're talking about, is from those suggestions or any that you come up with as well, I want you to then look at your calendar and I want you to plot at least one event that we talked about 
for the next month. So you'll have four events. And it might not be perfect, or you might feel like, well, Martha, I've got Thanksgiving. I've got, you know, my, you know, my annoying sister coming in for Thanksgiving. I'm not going to have time to do this or whatever. That's fine. But I want you guys to start getting in that mindset of actively planning and writing down places where you could actually go and co-mingle and practice your conversation skills. Because that's where we are right now. If you are single and you're looking to date again at midlife and you feel like out of practice and you don't want to go to the frat boy bar anymore, but you're sick and tired of the online dating apps and I can't blame you. So what we actually have to do, like I said, is take that radical responsibility to start thinking and having fun and strategizing where are great places that I can go where I feel awesome, where I, you know, maybe sometimes if it is out of my comfort zone, that's okay, because it's an opportunity for me to learn about something cool and to just kind of get more conversational and feel good about myself, you know, being open and approachable and seeing what happens. Now, for those of you who want to actually kind of dig in a little bit more on that, and if you do want to be a more successful midlife dater, and you do actually really want to prioritize finding love, I would actually invite you to join the Ready for Love group coaching program. Now we're actually finishing up the cohort from September and the six incredible women who have decided to, who decided to join that, they have walking away with such clarity and such confidence. And they know the next steps now that they need to go and meet and connect with men. And they actually have the clarity on what they're looking for. And they have the confidence on their dating values and dating standards. And so now they actually know what they need to do. So they don't repeat any of the mistakes that they made dating in the past. So they know that the next love that they meet and their next relationship is going to be a successful one. So if that is something that intrigues you and you definitely would like help with, with a certified dating coach who is no bullshit, who is going to have your back and you want that in a beautiful container that is just a bunch of other incredible women, no more than six women as well as one-on-one coaching with me where we dig deep into your love life and get a, get a get a strategy that's going to work for you so you can actually succeed at dating at midlife. I want to see you in that next Ready for Love group coaching program. Now it starts in February, 2023, but I am actually going to be launching some early bird pricing and early bird specials starting in December. So if you're like, well, Martha, I'm not sure. I want to know a little bit more about it. Hell yeah. What I would invite you to do is schedule your next steps call. And you can do that here. If you want to actually take a screenshot of that, I would definitely invite you to do that. And I am happy to put it in the, um, in the chat as well. So that everybody is, that's it. We are five minutes from the hour. So I want to thank everybody for, for attending this as well as thanking everybody who is watching this on demand afterwards. And if you ever have any questions, please let me know, holler at your girl. Um, You guys all know how to find me and I can't wait to talk to you soon. And I cannot wait to see you join us in that ready for love group coaching mastermind in February of 2023. So that's all I have for now. I hope you guys have a happy Veterans Day and a great weekend.